The open source community is full of mega talent. In today's video, I'm going to cover 14 projects and what I learned from them. Usually I dive into the code behind projects, but today I'm gonna to dive into everything else. That means design, community, marketing, and even cool animations they put out on their projects. Running an open source project isn't just about the code behind it. It's also about getting those GitHub stars and growing as much as possible and also commercializing it so you can maintain it for the long run. First project we're gonna look at is Badget by Code Hagen. Code Hagen is growing really well on Twitter. What I've learned from Code Hagen is how to put out amazing tweets. Look at the tweets he puts out. Each tweet is a very similar format with a video at the bottom. He's very consistent and each video gets an incredible number of views. So let's just take a look at this tweet. He uses some emojis to make it stand out. He uses bold at the top. And here you can see he's mentioned a number, 1800 stars on GitHub. Showing any sort of metrics is a great hack to grow and get an audience on Twitter. People just love to see progress updates. You can see every line ends with an emoji as well that gives it some character. And here he uses the bullet points. He uses this diamond symbol for the bullet points. Very short to the point tweet and broken up into small sections. Another really smart idea is mentioning his tech stack at the end of each of these tweets. For example, he mentions Clerk over here, which is an authentication platform. Now Clerk will see this tweet and be like, hey, I want this tweet to get as much reach as possible. So they'll give it a retweet. And of the eight teams he mentions in the, tree, in the tweet, there's a good chance one or two of them will go and retweet him. Last thing I'll mention, the most important part, the videos are awesome. Here you can see I'm using dark mode. So what he's done that's smart is he's used some padding around the video, this orange padding from Screen Studio, so it stands out. It's not just black on black, but it immediately pops out to the eye. And also people love to see videos of your product and Screen Studio animations also make the videos amazing. This video is actually even using Screen Studio, but here's a great use of it for product videos and tons of people are doing it. It's a really good idea and really great product to use. You can even see people are asking, how did he create the video? So I'll stick a link to my Screen Studio affiliate link in the description if you wanna try it out. The project he's building is Badget. Budget better, gain more experience. Badget, like the website, it's still coming along. You'll see the landing page is still very small. I like the font he's used. The font is Urbanist. It looks like Cal Sans. It's very strong and it's a great header font. And over here, he's using Inter as the copy font, which is also extremely common, especially for Tailwind projects. Next project is Midday. I actually covered them in my previous video. So go take a look at that if you wanna see more about the code behind it. I love what they've done with the animations. This is all open source. So you can go in, dive into a repo and see how they did it. I think in this case, they're using frame or motion for these animations. You'll see throughout, here's another subtle animation. And one thing which they did, which is really cool, is their pitch that I covered in the previous video. But here's the pitch deck, it's fully built in Next.js. It's using Shadcn over here. This is a carousel from Shadcn. Here you can see live updating stats, which, which is really cool. We can see they're up to 2000 GitHub stars, 3,500 people on the wait list. So yeah, really cool how they put this together. And if you wanna see how that was built, just jump back to the previous video. Next project is dub.sh. It's absolutely flying at the moment. It just hit number one on product hunt for the entire month. Hitting number one for the day is tough, for the week is tough, but month is really next level. There's only 12 of them all year. Maybe he can get number one for the year as well, but really incredible job. I love the website. Just look at the clean design. Everything about this product is polished. You can also interact with the app itself from the landing page. So all of these components are used within the app itself, but he reuses them on the landing page. It used to be one Next.js project. He actually split and using Turbo Repo and he split that into two projects recently. He's got the marketing site, which is what you're seeing now. And then the app itself is app.dub.co. But even though he has a, a main domain and a subdomain, he imports the packages from the Turbo Repo into the main domain and he reuses the components here. So to try the app, you don't even have to log in. You can just use it directly from the dashboard hey, you can really dive into how it works. Cool animations, he's got videos now. Um, if we click learn more, it goes to its own page. There used to be some more demos here. Um, okay, interesting. So he actually has switched these out for demos in the past, used to be able to actually interact with the app from this area as well. Testimonials, but it's just clean the design. And here you can see this component, which I've seen some other projects take as well, this roadmap component and yeah, just everything about it. He fully deserves to be on the 16,000 stars. And this is just going up the whole time. Another new component actually that he added recently. I think he spoke about this on his Twitter. If you want to see the code behind it, just go and take a look at the GitHub repo. If we dive into his blog, you'll continue to see just everything is very clean here. You can see that tags have been added. This is a very nice blog. 
a blog is like a pretty simple thing to add, but everything around this app is just clean. It was the same with the product hunt launch. If you take a look there, the graphics, everything around it is just really nice. Here's a little bit about the app itself. This is just one page of analytics, but just everything here is very clean within the app itself. Steven on Twitter, this is also a masterclass in marketing and developer relations. He used to work at Vercel till quite recently where he used to do a lot of this. He used to put out a lot of open source projects, many of which I've covered in the past on the channel. Building projects is a great way to build your audience, by the way, but it goes way beyond that. He's also just a really good tweeter. Here you can see his pinned tweet has got 200,000 views, but just loads of his tweets have had a lot of attention. When I launched Inbox Zero on Product Hunt, he tweeted about it and that got over 100,000 views, which is really insane, honestly. And this is something he also does incredibly well. His, his tweets are good to the point, but he's always lifting other people up and he's lifted up so many people in the open source community. And now others like myself want to help lift him up as well. So anytime he launches anything, like when he launches his own product hunt, the reason he was able to get to product of the month is because he helped people like me get to product of the day. So we help him get to product of the month. And obviously it goes way beyond that. He's got 40,000 followers, a handful of people helping a bit more isn't what's going to move the needle, but just every little helps. He's helped many different people. And yeah, definitely worth taking a look at his strategy, how well he's implementing everything and executing. He's also been playing around with new products. He's his product. He's really good at marketing it. For example, here you can change the OG image for a link, someone else's link. So here you can see Ilias has put in his own image into this link he's sharing via this via the dub.sh link sharing tool, which is really cool. But there's many other tools that he's created. For example, if you want to do git.new, loads of people signed up for that. Git.new slash inbox, for example, points you to inbox zero. And I think thousands of people signed up for a git.new link shortener. And that just brought tons of eyes to the dub.sh website as well. And this is part of the reason the project is growing so well. Here you can see how quickly the MRR is growing. It doesn't show the exact amount, but you can see it's just a rocket ship. Next is Omer McAdam. He's building an inbox. It's also an open source email tool. Similar to myself, I'm building Inbox Zero, an open source email tool. Where we differ is that I'm focused on Gmail users right now, and he's focused on a whole new email experience. So more similar to Skiff, which was an open source email solution, you get your own Skiff email. So that's what an inbox is doing. What I really like about what Omar's doing, he's created a community on Discord with a lot of the open source founders mentioned in the suite, maybe all of them, honestly. Also, he's been really supportive of Inbox Zero. He will help share when Inbox Zero has launched. And even though it could be a potentially competitive product in some sense, he's helped share whenever uh, I put something out and also whenever anyone from the community has put something out. So also, this is a masterclass in building a community. Here's a quick look at the Uninbox website using CalSans as the font. And yeah, behind the scenes, I think this is using Nuxt for the project. They're still quite early. I think literally just this week or so, they've started opening it up to people to sign up. So take a look at the project, give them a star on GitHub. Next is papermark.io. This is by Mark Seitz and by Yulia. <laughs> I accidentally tagged Microsoft in the tweet over here. And so what they've done, which is really cool one, Paper Market came first on Product Hunt. Mark wrote a really good post about how you can get to first on Product Hunt as well. I think actually they came first twice in the last year, which is really cool. Paper Mark is a doc send alternative, which is open source, of course. Mark also runs an open source YouTube channel. I don't think he's been too active on it recently, but this is definitely inspiration for me when I was getting started with my channel. Uh, by chance, we were both talking about very uh, similar things, uh, different open source projects each week. And there might even be some projects that we've both discussed. Next is cow.com. Cow.com has $30 million in funding. It's a Calendly alternative and it seems to be growing very well. All the metrics are public, so you can take a look at how that's going for them. Cool website. It's what I use for my booking link as well. You can see some great de teams like DL use it. The founder went through YC or the founders did. One thing I really like about the project is Cow Sands. This is a font, which I guess they created with Mark Davis. You can see it really stands out and you'll see a handful of the projects I mentioned in this repo use CalSans as a font. Inbox Zero is one of the projects that actually uses it. And yeah, it's just a beautiful font for heading. So I really like it. One thing I'd love to see for this is right now they only have one font weight, so only semi bold. And if you try to use it for other font weights, it doesn't actually come out amazingly. So it'd be cool if they ever make an update to this. But yeah, really cool thing to have. And it's also a unique marketing angle. like hey, this project uses CalSans, who is cow.com. So anyway, that's cool. And yeah, give the founder peer a follow on Twitter as well.
Next up is Formbricks. This is an open source form solution. So quickly embed forms in your website. And one of the really th cool things they did to help the community is open source friends. So lots of open source projects, once you hit 200 likes, I think you can get on this list, or at least you used to be able to, but basically lots of projects will be linking to each other. So you can see here, Formbricks OSS friends. There's a list of projects. Let's see if Inbox Zero is here, here you can see it. So we're all linking to each other. There's quite a few in this list right now. And you'll see the same list is actually on the Inbox Zero website and they have a very simple API within their repo so you can get the list and always be up to date. So here you can see the same list on my website and this helps for SEO purposes. And yeah, it's just a nice way to be able to share about other open source projects and help bring all of us up together. And Formbricks is also behind OSS.gg and that's a project to game, gamify open source contributions. You can take a look a bit more about it here. I think they launched this in the last month or so and it seems to be getting a good amount of traction. I haven't looked into it too much here. You can see in the Formbricks hackathon, for example, they got 100 contributors, they shipped 12 features and so on. And OSSGG is looking to reward these contributors and make it more of a game. So really cool concept, worth taking a look at. I need to take a bit of a deeper dive into this in the future as well. Open status is a way to help you monitor your services. So if you want to know if your API has gone down or what the performance of a certain API endpoint is, they're doing really well, 4,000 stars on GitHub, which is awesome because it is a developer focused product. Here you can see they offer status pages. They give you alerting if anything is down. And here you can see the change log that we saw from dub.sh, very similar style here. What I learned from this project is how to set up Turbo Repo and also how they use Tinybird for their analytics. Tinybird is a serverless click out solution. One other cool thing that they have, they've done these uh, latency tests. So here you can see how the cell serverless functions compares to the cell edge functions. And here you can see how uh, render compares to Cloudflare workers and fly.io and so on. So really cool stuff over here. Let's just jump into one of these. Here you can see the code that they use for these tests, like actually really short code. And here you can see all the different uh, regions they've been testing from. And here you can see charts of the latency and, and how they all compare. So here you can see cold starts are much slower than warm starts and edge functions are the fastest, which is what you'd expect. They don't have a database in these tests. It would change a little bit if the edge function had to, to connect to a database. Novu is open source notification infrastructure for developers. I did a video on them quite recently. The reason you would use them, basically, if you want to put notifications in your app, this is a good product to go and do that. Why are notifications difficult? You, you could just build it yourself, but once you get bigger, it can start to become a mess. You can get a lot of different notifications. You might have to scale that notification system. You might wanna send some over email, some over push notifications, some within the app itself. And they basically make it easy to manage all of that. You just push something to their queue and it just goes and sends. And you can have things like digest as well. Here you can see a digest where every, let's say you don't wanna notify someone about every single tweet they get. So instead you'd have a digest where they put all 100 tweets into one email every half an hour, you might get a digest of all the notifications you got all every day. And here you can see some logic. If the user is online, do this. If the user is online, do something else. You could send SMS messages and so on. And yeah, there's, you, you can basically set up everything through this app. Some of the cool things to learn about the project are how they use Redis and Redis bull queue to manage uh, everything. Queues are extremely important for a lot of projects, especially if you want to scale things. It's one of the best ways to scale things. So definitely worth taking a look at what they've done there. And I did a full video on how they use Redis bull queues to do all of that. Next up is ShadCN. This is one of the most popular open source component libraries or helps you build your own component library. It's not a component library. It's built with Tailwind, Redix UI. A lot of people are using it, but go take a look. Probably half the projects that I mentioned in this video might be using it. Loads of amazing examples to use. They have a CLI I actually covered how they built their CLI in a previous video and how that works behind the scenes. But just everything about this project has got amazing design. I hope it doesn't get to the point where it becomes too popular and it becomes like bootstrap or ant design or even material UI where it's just too popular. That will probably happen in a year or two, honestly, because everyone will be using it. Uh, it's just ShadCN. We need something else. But yeah, one of the things they do really is that they make it very easy to customize. Similar to Tailwind UI, you can go and edit the CSS itself or the Tailwind classes, and you don't need to pass props in. You're not limited at all. You don't actually import anything from ShadCN. You just paste the code directly into your project. So these accordion components, you import them, but you're importing them directly from the project. And this is super important because it really means you can adjust anything about it and you're not limited by the project maintainer to have given you the correct props or classes that you can push in. Like the code just lives in your project 
and you can edit it at will at any point. You're not tied to them at all. Next up is the Guild. This is the development agency that has done a ton of work in the open source world. If you've used GraphQL, you can see basically every library that exists there behind it. They've done some amazing stuff. I don't use GraphQL so much anymore, but if you are using GraphQL, high chance you've used some of their libraries. If it's for generating types, TypeScript, if, if you're using GraphQL Yoga, they've done a ton of different things there. And one insane piece of news from a few years ago, I still can't even wrap my head around this, how a development agency gets so much money, but they had a $48 million deal with The Graph, which is a Web3 company focused on GraphQL. So yeah, this is a really good example of how you can monetize yourself being strong open source contributors. I know the founders, and even before they had all these mega clients, they were doing tons of stuff in the open source world just because they really cared about open source. But it doesn't mean you can't do extremely well for yourself financially being in the open source world. And here specifically, they're not building commercial open source projects, or not that I know that all of them are like MIT licensed GraphQL packages that are used by thousands of people, thousands of huge companies. And then they'll also go and sell their services to different companies. So here you can see some amazing clients that they'll be working with. Documento is a document signing platform. I really like how they've built a professional website. I think it's still in early access, it seems over here. But yeah, they're also one of the staples of the open source community. And you can see two and a half thousand commits, 6,000 stars going really well. And I think it will only continue to grow a lot in the future as it becomes more readily available. Unkey is an open source API authentication and authorization platform. Here you can see they're using the Tailwind component for their website. I actually use this for my agency as well. But yeah, if you want to hire a freelance developer, go take a look at it. It's just funny <laughs> to bump into websites that look the same as yours. The founder is Cronarch. He used to work at Upstash, really cool project that I use as well. But one of the things he built is Zod Bird, which is a Zod library for TinyBird. So it brings types and validation to TinyBird. And this is what I use in my project. I know some other projects use it as well, such as Open Status. Last one I'll mention is Navo David. He was part of the Novu team that helped grow it. That's on something like 30,000 stars right now. And he writes a lot about marketing open source projects. He's also got his own open source project called GitRoom. So this is helping you grow your open source project. I take a look at that. He's recently launched it and I'm sure you can learn a lot of tips from it. I see already he's got 3000 stars. That's amazing. Uh, I didn't know it had grown that much. And here you can see some of the tips he'll give you how to get githubstars.com. You'll find the link over here on his website. Some of the tips he gave me is you need to hit lots of different platforms. So for example, in the past, like DevDoc2 was a very popular platform, but the way they post and get a lot of traction. But one of the things you want to do to get on GitHub trending is have a lot put in one go. So for example, you might decide to accept 20 pull requests at the same time, and then also post on YouTube, and then also post on Dev.2, and then also do a paid post with an influencer or whatever it is. And if you put all of those together, then you stand a much better chance of trending on GitHub. And once you trend on GitHub, you're going to get a lot of stars as well. Instead of look, if you were to spread that out, then you might not get the same amount of impact because you just have a little bit at a time. Instead, what you want is really like one big push altogether. So that was one of the tips he gave me. But if you go to get how to get GitHub stars, you'll find a lot more tips. He also has a Discord server, which you can talk to him in and talk to other open source uh, marketers. That's the end of the video. I hope you liked it. Also check out my own open source project, Inbox Zero, fully open source, around 2000 stars on GitHub right now. Help me get a bit further with another star. And yeah, let me know which projects you're most interested in. I hope you enjoyed this video. I didn't really dive into the code. That's what I usually do in my videos, but I hope this was still valuable to you if you're building in the open source space yourself.